God bless you. You're watching you here in the program, Getting to Know Jesus. And my name is Pastor Harris Kekulides, and today we're going to have a study on the bearing fig tree spoken in Luke 13, verses 6 to 10. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, um, vineyard behold these three years i come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none cut it down why cumbereth it the ground and he answering said unto him lord let it alone this year also till i shall dig about it and dung and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Now, I, I want to speak about this parable. Um, is is not a coincidence that <clears throat> here Jesus speaks about the time of his ministry. Uh, remember, um, Jesus' ministry was three years and a half. And it exactly says, Behold, these three years I've been seeking fruit of this fig tree. The fig tree represents Israel. Um, but we look at um, in Luke chapter 13, verses 1 to 5, um, we see Jesus speaks of repentance um, and God's punishment on the unrepented. And remember the verse, um, Luke 13, verse 5, Except ye repent, ye will all likewise perish. Um, then if we continue. <clears throat> reading um, Luke's gospel, then he goes on to speak about the bearing fruit, about bearing fruit and repentance in this parable. Um, he's talking about fruit of repentance. Jesus in this parable shows the long suffering and forbearance of God toward Israel. And we can also see in this parable <clears throat> God's long suffering toward his elect giving the church time to repent of sin. But also, this parable speaks of a time when his long-suffering and forbearance would be at a close. And when that happens, those who are rebellious will be rooted out of the kingdom. Jerusalem fell to destruction in 70 AD. God gave the Jewish nation 40 years to repent for the fruit of repentance and receive the Messiah, but a hardened heart cannot give what it cannot produce. Praise God for the promise that one day those who are alive of the Jewish nation will repent and receive the Messiah, giving the fruit that God waited for. <clears throat> now concerning the church, God may not send his elect to hell, but that does not stop him from chastening or disciplining those who he loves. And if needs be, be put to death to save their souls. We have to remember these things. We have to remember this. And, and you might say, well, I'm saved. I won't go to hell. Well, that doesn't stop God from disciplining you. That doesn't stop God as a, as a loving father to put his hand upon your health. And if possible, take your life. Remember what John says, um, 1 John chapter 5, there's sin unto death. And we saw that if you, if you read 1 Corinthians, you see that there were some people taking the Lord's Supper not worthy. In not in a worthy manner. And they died. Some of them were sick and some of them died. And Ananias and Sapphira. Um, we, we see them falling dead to the ground because they lied to the Holy Spirit. So keep these things in remembrance. We as Christians, each day, we have to bear fruit of repentance and repent of sins. <clears throat> we have to confess our sins. We have to um, mourn for the sins of others and ourselves as well because we're still in this flesh. And we may be strong one day, but the next day we might have a fall. And keep in mind, keep ourselves in, in, in a humble state knowing our condition in our hearts. 
and seeking the Lord, loving the Lord, searching for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he's going to come, he's going to see our works. Um, and it's a shame of, of lots of things that is happening in many churches. They're not teaching the word of God as they should, and that's because there's lots of people that are not saved in those churches, and they're, and they're teaching the church <laughs> instead of the church teaching them. The unsaved is teaching the church, which is, is a contradiction. But this parable of the barren fig tree, it's, it's so, so needful for us to look at it and examine it clearly. Like I said about this parable, who is that certain man? Well, is God, God the Father. <clears throat> who is the one that's pleading uh, for more time, for fruit? That servant, well, is Jesus. Give it time, give it time, give it time. God gives you time. God gives you enough time to repent. How many chances doesn't God give an unrepentant sinner? He has all his life to repent, and yet many times he doesn't repent. And if he does not repent and come to Jesus, he will die in his sins. Jesus has given you enough time. If you're hearing this message, Jesus has given you enough time to repent and to come and give fruit of repent repentance. Well, we, we use this verse a lot. Uh, we're saved by grace and not of works. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And, and we forget the following verse after Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Uh, we read Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and we say, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of, our, of yourselves is the gift of God, now works that anyone should boost. And when we quote this verse thousands and thousands of times, and, and we forget the next verse. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath be before ordained that we should walk in them. God ordained. That, she, that we should give good works. That we should bear fruit. God expects his fruit of his church. He expects to find the church with fruit. And some of it is the fruit of the Spirit that he's referring to. What well, are the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. But there's more. Talking about fruit. In Hebrews, it speaks about the, the, the fruit of praise, of worship. We, we have to worship our God. There's holiness as well. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about, about, the, the, about the fruit of our lips giving praise to God. The Bible talks about the fruit of righteousness in Hebrews 12 verses 11. Fruit of righteousness. God wants us to, to live a righteous life. When we are in position towards God, we should be in living as well. What does Jesus speak about in Matthew 7? Matthew 7 talks about a tree and fruits. It, it, it talks about trees and fruits as well. Matthew 7, um, verses 17 says, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruits. 
a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. And then he goes on saying that everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter in the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist preaching his, his sermon says, in, in chapter 3 verse 8 says, Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. John the Baptist's ministry was repentance. And if, if we go a, a little bit further, when Jesus starts his, his public ministry, what is Jesus going to preach? In chapter 4 of Matthew, verses 17, Jesus preached repentance as well. For that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. <clears throat> the same thing was preached by the disciples. When they preached, they preached about the kingdom, but they had to preach the same thing that Jesus preached. About repentance, a turning away. Repentance means to change one's mind. And what follows with rep uh, one changing their mind? What follows? A changed life. There has to be a difference from you when you first came to Christ. Matthew 3 verse 2 says, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Talking about John the Baptist. Look at what Matthew 9 verse 13 says. But go ye and learn what that meaning. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not called the righteous, but sinners to repentance. We love to quote this verse, but we don't look at the repentance part. Mark 1.15 and saying the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Luke 5.32 I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance again. We hear that. We, we, we hear the word repent. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Even the disciples preach repentance. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repent. Repentance. We know that repentance is a gift of God. God gives repentance. 2 Timothy 2 verses 25 and 26 in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if God preadventure will give them repentance to acknowledge of the truth that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who have taken them captive by at his will. But if something is not preached in the churches nine days, um, they, they preach a, 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 a gospel without repentance. When, when, the, when repentance was the main theme of the gospel, it was repent and believe. It was repent and believe. Many of the converts in the churches nowadays don't believe in repentance. And if they don't believe in repentance, they were not saved. Repentance is a fruit of God. And this is the main message of that parable, the fig tree. That was the fruit that God was looking forward. Something that that we, we look in, 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 in and when when Jesus speaks to the to the seven churches, we see a lot. Jesus saying, "Repent." Jesus says, "Repent." Look at what Revelations three, nineteen says: "As many as I love, I rebuke and chase them. Be jealous, therefore, and repent." That's Revelation three nineteen. 
God is seeking fruit of repentance. God is seeking fruit of repentance from His church. God is seeking fruit of repentance of His people. God is seeking fruit of repentance from true converts. This is, this is what the Bible is all about. The Bible speaks all about Jesus. But you can see from Genesis to Revelation, repentance as well. Nowadays, people preach the prodigal son and they don't preach repentance in that story. In, in, in the story of prodigal son, we see the prodigal son repenting of his sin. Recognizing his sin. I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. Our sins are against God. If we know that our sins is against a mighty, holy, righteous God, then we have to know that we don't just sin against man, we sin against God. And this is why we have to come to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the only one that could cleanse us from our sins. And the Holy Spirit that comes upon the Christian is the only one that can help us live a straight, righteous life. I, I, I need you to know that repentance is what the church needs nowadays. And repentance and coming to Jesus. There's godly sorrows and there's the, the sorrow of this world. But we need godly sorrows. We have to know that our sin is against God. What did David said when he sinned with Bathsheba? What did David said? David recognized that his sin was against God. Look at what David said. Psalms 51 verses 4. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. David recognized that his sin was against God. Look at what Joseph says to Potiphar's wife. He says, there, there is none greater in this house than I, neither have I, he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? That's Genesis 39 verse 9. Our trespasses, our sins are against God. And we, when we think we only sin against man, we're deceiving ourselves. And God is seeking fruit of repentance from his people. There needs to be repentance in, in the Christian. The fruit of repentance is a fruit. The Bible calls it fruit. And it's the fruit spoken about in Luke 13. We're going to talk more about the Word of God as these weeks go by. God bless you and you're watching Gain to Know Jesus.